This lesson is on circles. You should first recall the distance formula that we learned some time ago. A circle is defined as the collection of points that are all the same distance from a center. Here's what this really means. If I rewrite this, and I keep most of it the same, but I'll put just a regular x here and a regular y here, and let's call this x1 and y1. And with the circle, if they're the same distance, that means this is equal to some number, a specific number that's given to you, and that's actually going to be the radius of the circle. So, if these are all points that are the same distance away from each other, then that means that for any x and y value, they're the same distance from this point, x1, y1. So that is the center of our circle. But this isn't quite the correct formula that we normally use for a circle. To make things a little easier on ourselves, we get rid of the square root by just squaring both sides. So here, if I square this, it becomes x minus x sub 1 squared plus y minus y sub 1 squared, and that's going to be equal to r squared. So again, what this means is that all these xy points are a certain distance r from the center. So graphically, if here I have my coordinate plane, now let's say x1 is 1 and y1 is 2. And we can set r equal to 2. So if I go over 1 on the x's and up 2 on the y's, that's the center of my circle. And the radius of the circle is 2. So it's going to reach all the way down here. It's going to end up going out here. And if I kind of connect it like I imagine a circle would be, it would be something like that. So the equation for this circle with a radius of 2 and a center at 1 comma 2 is x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared is equal to 2 squared, which is just 4. This equation also makes it pretty easy for us to find some of the tangent lines. Tangent lines are the lines that go right across a circle like that. They just barely touch the surface, and it goes off, it's parallel to this tiny point right here. If you could take two points that are really close to each other, then they would make that line. So there are really tangents all over this circle. In fact, there are infinitely many tangents. That wasn't a very good one. That's better. For the sake of what we're learning here, we'll only discuss four of these tangents. And these are the ones on the bottom and on the top, on the left and on the right. So recall that the center of this circle is at x1 comma y1. We also know that this distance is r. That means the line on the left, which I'll denote L, well, because L is a vertical line, we know it's going to be like x is equal to something. So x is equal to something. And well, that something is just the x value at that line, which is x1, but we're going back r. So that means it's x1 minus r. You can do the same for the lines on the right, on the top, and on the bottom. On, in the case of the right, you'll still have x, but for the top and the bottom, your lines are going to be y equals. And on the right side, you have x1, but now you add r onto it. And for the top, you have y1 and you add r. For the bottom, you have y1, and you go down r. Circles also have some pretty special properties. 
So if I told you two points that are perfectly opposite each other, or you can also call them endpoints to the diameter, you can easily find the radius and the equation of the circle. Well, here's how. If you take the midpoint, you very obviously get your center of the circle. So by taking the midpoint, you can find x1 and y1. And to find the radius, well, you just take the distance and divide it by 2. And all of this comes from this equation, the equation of a circle. Although, specifically, this is the equation in standard form. To learn more about circles, please take a look at the examples video.